In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Well, welcome to St. Saviour's this morning, whether you're regular, or joining us from the internet, or a visitor. That's the last one. Yeah, not the last one. The last in my mind, I mean. Um, we offer this Mass to the greater glory of God for the needs and intentions of all in our parish and today on this Mothering Sunday for the mothers of the Holy Land and Ukraine. We're at the midpoint of Lent, Letero Sunday, where today in the midst of our penitence we are reminded of joy. And this joy, of course, is based in the resurrection. But before the resurrection came the cross, as Jesus reminds us in our gospel this morning. The cross is the ultimate act of God's mercy towards us. We're reminded today of this mercy when we're assured by the Lord that if we believe in him, we will not be lost, but may share his eternal life. So brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And after each petition, the choir will answer on our behalf. Lord Jesus, through your holy cross, you reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Kyrie eleison. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. All the heads of the priesthood and the people too added infidelity to infidelity copying all the shameful practices of the nations and defiling the temple that the Lord had consecrated for himself in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, tirelessly sent them messenger after messenger since he wished to spare his people and his house. But they ridiculed the messengers of God. They despised his words. They laughed at his prophets until at last, the wrath of the Lord rose so high against his people that there was no further remedy. Their enemies burned down the temple of God, demolished the walls of Jerusalem, set fire to all its palaces, and destroyed everything of value in it. The survivors were deported to, by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. They were to serve him and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. This is how the word of the Lord was fulfilled that he spoke through Jeremiah. 
until this land has enjoyed its Sabbath rest, until 70 years have gone by, it will keep Sabbath throughout the days of its desolation. And in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord that was spoken through Jeremiah, the Lord roused the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to issue a proclamation and to have it publicly displayed throughout his kingdom. Thus speaks Cyrus, king of Persia. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has ordered me to build him a temple in Jerusalem in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. God loved us with so much love that he was generous with his mercy. When we were dead through our sins, he brought us to life with Christ. It is through grace that you have been saved and raved us up with him and gave us a place with him in heaven, in Christ Jesus. This was to show for all ages to come through his goodness towards us in Christ Jesus, how infinitely rich he is in grace. Because it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, not by anything of your own, but by a gift from God, not by anything that you have done, so that nobody can claim the credit. We are God's work of art, created in Christ Jesus to live the good life as from the beginning 
he had meant us to live it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, the Son of Man must be lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On these grounds is sentence pronounced, that though the light has come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it, for fear his action should be exposed. But the man who lives by the truth comes out into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. The Son of Man must be lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today, the light of Easter already brightens our Lent purple and enlightens it into the colour rose. We're coming to the end of the first part of Lent with its focus on penitence, on turning towards God who lovingly beckons each of us. Soon we begin to focus our attention on Christ's passion as we move closer to Easter. Having sought conversion in our own lives, we focus now on Christ pouring out his life for us and the effects of that wonderful sacrifice. The Gospel recounts a conversation that took place at night. We eavesdrop on the conclusion of a fascinating encounter 
between Nicodemus and the Lord. Nicodemus longs to understand what is behind the miracles the Lord has been working. Who is this person, Jesus? As a leading Pharisee, it would be unwise for him to be seen with the Lord, but as a searcher for truth, he takes the risk. The cover of darkness hides their conversation from those who would simply not understand. As Jesus speaks, he spells out some basics to Nicodemus. The basics contain the moving truth that we are forever loved by God. Christianity rests on the firm conviction that in Jesus, God's love reaches down into the depths of our sick, sinful and human world. It is part of the essence of God's nature to love and to give. For every faithful Christian, this is the essence of the gospel story, and it is refreshed for us annually in both the preaching and the actions of Holy Week. The words Jesus speaks to Nicodemus admirably spell it out. God loved the world so much that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. And these well-known and much-loved words are introduced by others, reminding Nicodemus of a belief he would have known well. The Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Jesus asks Nicodemus to recall how Moses, the great Israelite leader, saved his people during a plague of snakes by raising the bronze image of a serpent and all who looked at it were healed. Jesus links his impending sacrifice to this raising up when he says the son of man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent. Using this reference to Moses, the Lord indicates that he too will be lifted he too will be raised up to pour out his life for us and to heal and to forgive all those who look upon him with the eyes of faith. Seeing and believing in him, the one who has been sent, the one who was crucified and raised up, will strengthen the eternal life first shared with each of us at baptism. In the first and most obvious sense, being lifted up, points to the crucifixion, but after it also to the Lord's rising as the bonds of death were broken on the third day, and later still to his being raised to heaven in the ascension. These moments of the raising up of Christ are moments in the restoring and the renewing and the raising of our fallen humanity and that of all believers. Christ's journey through his death, resurrection and ascension charts a course through which you and I, who are baptised into his death, can respond and follow into eternal life. But the raising up of Jesus is much more, much, much more than that of the bronze serpent on a pole recounted in the book of Numbers. The raising up of Christ has power not only to simply heal, but infinitely more. One author speaks of three steps in this raising up of the Lord. The first and most obvious is when he was hoisted on the cross on Good Friday. And a power-filled memorial of that lifting up on the cross is enacted for us each Good Friday, when during the liturgy a veiled cross is brought in and slowly uncovered. We adore the raised up Jesus and our faith is strengthened. And soon after the bringing in of the cross, we can, if we want, come forward and associate ourselves with this lifting up in a deep and powerful way. We acknowledge our need of forgiveness and the one who bestows it. 
Nicodemus came to Jesus in darkness. And sometimes our human darkness is as a result of our sin. A time when we need to look again at the outstretched arms of the Lord on the cross and to listen to hear his words of restoration to the penitent thief. The second step in Christ being raised up was when he was raised up from death at the resurrection. We enact this in the quiet, gentle spreading of the light of the risen Christ from the paschal candle carried into church at the Easter vigil. And one by one, we light our own candles from it. This new life we will then contemplate for 50 days to let its truth sink deep inside us. Nicodemus came to Jesus in darkness. Sometimes our human darkness is when we are in grief, when we are helped if we pause to take a new look at the new life of Easter Day, life communicated to us. All those who look upon Jesus in faith will be saved and will be given eternal life, a life that will never be taken away. We need to look up to refresh us when we have run out of hope or things seem too much or when we really do need to make a new start in something or other. And most poignantly and painfully, when someone we know or love dies. Verses from today's gospel are a very appropriate introduction to the conversation after mass this afternoon when Father Mark and Father Richard will explore some aspects of the church's ministry in grief. These verses are among the texts that can support us at these times. The third step is when the Lord is lifted up to heaven at the ascension and our redeemed humanity is taken back to God. Sometimes our darkness is because we need our human vision readjusted to be able to focus more fully on the things of God and to set our minds and hearts on his kingdom once more. Then it is the third step, the step of the ascension, which can help this revisioning and the opening of eyes anew to see more clearly God's purposes and his way of acting in the world he has made. If you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Here we return to Nicodemus. His conversation with Jesus is something that Nicodemus will remember and will act on later in front of the Pharisees as he requests a fair trial for the Lord and later still helps to bury the Lord's body. Perhaps his revisioning and the opening of his eyes enabled him to go on to even more. Perhaps he glimpsed what and who is really behind the teaching and the miracles of the person that we each acknowledge as our saviour. The son of man must be lifted up and ourselves with him. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. On our journey through Lent, we bring before the Lord our hopes, our concerns, and our needs. Let us pray for a deeper faith in God's activity in the world and that we may be inspired towards a spirit of self-giving by the Lord who gave himself for us when he was lifted high on the cross. Lord, hear us. Lord, Jesus. Let us pray for the work of the Diocesan Board of Education and for Trevor Christin, the director. In this parish, we pray for those who enrich the liturgy by serving or making music. Lord, hear us. Lord, Let us pray for those who, like Nicodemus, search for the truth about Jesus Christ. When we find ourselves in dialogue with them, may we be given the right words for each situation and for each person. Lord, hear us. Lord, Jesus. Let us pray for areas of the world where the love of and mercy of God is undermined or obscured by violence, war, famine, or disease. We continue our prayers for a ceasefire and increased aid in Palestine. Lord, hear us. Let us pray in thanksgiving and appreciation for the love and care of our families, and today especially for our mothers. We remember children who will grow up without parents or as a result of migration, violence or war. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for a blessing on our Finding Hope in Grief conversation this afternoon and on the organisations and individuals who support those in grief, including the ministry of this parish. Lord, hear us. Let us ask for greater wholeness for people who are troubled or who suffer in any way to the wounded of war and to the displaced, bring healing and care. Among the sick, we name His Majesty the King, Elliot, John Burford, Mia, <laughs> Pam Sharley, John Walters, John Rains, Isabel Nugent, Victor Walsh, Andrew Grundy, Bill Clark, Daniel, Errol, Tom Waller, Sue Dixon, Brenda Wright, Rosalind Broadhurst, George Gotham, Stephen Fairbrother, Madge Leeson, Nick, Margaret Barton, Christopher Marsden, Caroline, Margaret and David Dagger. Lord, hear us. 
Let us pray that our loving Father's mercy may bring those who have died to the peace prepared for them. We pray for Lord Sousa, Peter Jordick, Joan Stevens, Brenda Cheeseman, Michael Joyce, Zhao de Silva, James Short, Ian Hardley, Derek Hallam, Jennifer Rains, Tommy Baldwin, Brenda Smith, and Brill Brooks, who have died recently. And for, Brenda, and for Fred Reeve, Jill Churter, and Helen Margaret Burford, whose anniversaries we remember at this time. We pray for those who have recently been killed violently, for their families, and who grieve at this time. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that God will answer the petitions we make now in silence. We pray with Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. God of compassion and love, teach us your ways and hear the prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
Pray, dear friends, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting, for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of our hearts, that freed from disordered affections, we may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gates we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, St. Richard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Pope Francis, Martin, our bishop, William, his suffragan, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be here. Jerusalem is built as a city bonded as one together. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to sit down for a moment? Just to remind you, the last charity Lent lunch is this Thursday, this Thursday, the 14th of March. So if you'd like a ticket, please do. It'd be good to see good attendance for the last lunch. It's a great lunch and it's for charity. So this Thursday, 14th of March, tickets £10 available at the back. Things move so quickly at St Saviour's that um, by the time the booklet was printed, um, the Renaissance Singers concert is now back on. So ignore um, schedule for next Sunday's off. It's back on again in this great Monty Python world we live in. So um, next Sunday at three o'clock, Renaissance Singers, don't pay any attention to what's in the booklet. Next Sunday, three o'clock, Renaissance Sin Singers concert. And the last thing to mention, as um, Father Richard in his excellent sermons spoke about, and as we heard about in the prayers, at one o'clock today until three, Father and I are running a session on bereavement and grief. Now, if you haven't signed up, no problem for that, but we would recommend if you go off and get a sandwich and bring it back, so you, you'll be sustained from one o'clock till three o'clock. So the teaching is from one o'clock till three o'clock. If you haven't signed up, no problem, do come along. And it's all about finding hope in grief, finding hope in grief. Would you stand out for the blessing? The Lord be with you. Also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. 